Hello, and good morning or evening to you all. My name is Nucleus, and today I'm going to be discussing a topic of great importance to me, the history of atoms, as told by myself. In the long history of atoms, these concepts weren't always common knowledge. In fact, nobody's even thought of the potential of the atoms we know today. Well, that's actually a lie. The first person to suggest the concept of atoms was known as Democritus. But unfortunately for him, his work was largely overshadowed by another person in that time period, known as Aristotle. Aristotle's belief was that everything was made up of combinations of four elements, water, earth, fire, and air. But although Democritus' ideas didn't catch on back then, they would eventually be caught on with another individual known as John Dalton. John Dalton believed that all matter was composed of the atoms that Democritus had introduced as a concept many years before. He further developed this idea of putting it out there that atoms of given elements were identical, and that atoms of different elements were all different. Here is an example of a model created by Dalton to represent an atom. While Dalton's ideas served as very important advances in the long history of atoms, he also believed that atoms could not be created, broken down, or destroyed, which has since been disproven thanks to the research of J.J. Thompson. Hey, who vandalized my presentation? Uh, nobody? Mitochondria! Through the experiments of J.J. Thompson, using cathode rays to do what Dalton has said to be impossible, Thompson proved that atoms could, in fact, be broken down into something smaller. Thompson categorized these inner workings of an atom as positive and negative charges, known today as protons and electrons. Neutrons also exist as part of an atom, serving as the neutral charge. Here is an example of a model demonstrating Thompson's idea of an atom. As you can see, the negative charges are surrounded entirely by positive charges. But another scientist, known as Ernest Rutherford, had a challenge to this idea. Through an experiment of his own, commonly referred to as the gold foil experiment, Rutherford shot alpha particles at a piece of gold foil to see how the atoms would respond. The results of the experiment ended up being mixed. Some atoms passed through, while others bounced back, which led Rutherford to believe that atoms were mostly made up of empty space. However, the reason that some of the atoms bounced back was because of yours truly, the nucleus. Rutherford made the conclusion that at the center of every atom, there exists a nucleus. Here's an example of Rutherford's model. Yeah, I'm really important. That's right. <clears throat> I have two more main points I'd like to cover here, all involving the near end of developments with the atom history overview. Niles Bohr was a scientist who worked in Rutherford's labs, but while he worked there, he began to notice errors and inconsistencies in Rutherford's thinking. With the knowledge of this, he began to conduct experiments of his own with atoms. And through these discoveries, he was able to make a model of his own, known as the energy level model. The idea of this model was that the electrons were arranged in rings surrounding the nucleus. Each of these rings contained either positive or negative charges, and these charges are in constant motion around the nucleus. This model is very similar to a standard model of an atom you'd see in a science class, with there being a couple notable differences between the two. Bohr's model was a very important advancement in the history of atoms, and his model led up to the modern theory of atoms today. Over the years, many other scientists have furthered and developed the idea of atoms. In more recent times, scientists such as Schrodinger and Heisenberg developed what is known as the quantum mechanical model, stating that we can't entirely pinpoint the location of an atom. This model shows the protons, neutrons, as being surrounded by this charge known as the electron cloud. As you can see here, everything is scattered around. In a way, it resembles Thompson's old model, where the negative charges were surrounded by positive ones. Don't even think about it. The history of atoms still isn't set in stone, even with the many developments we've had over the years. There's probably still much we have yet to learn about atoms and their inner workings. But as it stands now, it looks like we're all caught up with the long, 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 long history of atoms. How did that sound? It sounded great! No, it didn't. Will you shut- <laughs>